Hey everyone, just a quick little uh, intro here. We are gonna take this Ender 6 and we're gonna convert it to a direct drive Hamera Revo. So let's come along with me and uh, we're gonna look how to uh, update this and make it uh, way better. Reasons I'm doing it, number one is that this extruder does not work properly. It continually strips out filament and I don't know if you can see it there, but it's all chewing the filament all inside there. I, it, I don't know, I've tried adjusting it a thousand ways. It doesn't work great. The other thing is that whoever got this put some generic heat break sink uh, in here. I can't find nozzles for it. It's a pain in the patootie to change the nozzles. It's just not working well. With my cable chain, it's working great. I just need a better, extruder slash nozzle set and I also need a way to you know put in bigger nozzles because hey this thing has a pretty big print volume so let's utilize that let's make it better and uh, we're running the uh, tiny machines firmware we're gonna set up so that the filament runout sensor works finally get it all set up and in a better place go from there Unfortunately, the OctoPrint uh, tablet that I had does not work. It will not charge. So I'm just back to going with whatever is there. I'm going to try and figure something out maybe for this. But can you get a Raspberry Pi anywhere? No. Not unless you want to print out or put out the same amount as a new printer. So once all the stuff gets in, we're going to go through this. And we're going to make this better. Okay, you know that everything was going to go to heck in a handbasket. I got a spaghetti mountain here. We got a spaghetti mountain here. And partially got everything together. A few little issues came up. And I'm going to create all these models. And I'm going to throw them up on Thingiverse. There'll be a link in the description once I get that all figured out. Um, there's a few things that that went on here. I did get this mounted. Now, the original mount, let's go over here, was, here we go, I made it out of PETG, and hey, it worked really good. It fit well, everything mounted good. Uh, you mount the extruder first uh, through these three holes, one, two, three, um, and then you flip it over and then mount it to the carriage. Great. The challenge was, remember I, I had that concern about the CR touch slash um, BL touch slash whatever? Well, it didn't work. So I thought I'd just try and use a little pair of nippers to nip a little bit of extra space there for the wiring for the CR touch. Well, I snapped it off. So I reattached it. Oh, right, so I reprinted the whole thing. And then I realized that the CR touch isn't long enough. So I had to print some spacers and those weren't long enough and trying to, you know, adjust this while it's on the thing because you gotta, oh my gosh, hours, 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 bending over, twisting. Um, thankfully my spine is good. So I have remixed this and I made this part about four, five, five millimeters longer with longer tunnels uh, for the screws to go in, so you don't need any nuts or that type of thing. Uh, three millimeter screws will bite into the holes uh, right there quite nicely, and it's the right length. And I also figured out how to put a notch in here for the CR touch to fit in, and then a BL touch will work with that too, but it's all good. So that's fixed. I have that mount right up here, and if we look from the side, we have dual mounts. We have this for the extruder, and then I have a separate one for the um, cable chain. Now, the slot I have for the filament lined up perfectly with the old head. But now that we have this little guy on there, move this back, now that we have this little guy on there, the extruder and head and everything are shifted to the left. 
So I had to figure this out, create a new little part. I'm not good in 3D CAD. This thing was already sort of pre-sliced and ready to go with everything set up the way I wanted it. So I just basically made a, uh, an extra little square in Prusa Slicer, figured out where the holes had to be offset to, and uh, just used a, a negative volume cylinder and bada bing bada boom. This guy works with this. So I'll throw this model up as well. They're all in 3MF formats. I apologize for that, but best I could do. Now the back um, component, so this was my original cable chain start, you know, thing, and it worked okay. There was a little challenge is that this part here goes up against the extrusion. You can see how narrow it is, and there's a lot of wires going through there. So as you're trying to refeed wires through, it's not great. A kind of a pain uh, to actually do that. And another challenge came up. Uh, I wanted to make a top for this and enclose it and get everything kind of figured out. And the cheapest way was um, through Spool 3D had the uh, OEM cover for this for a hundred bucks Canadian. Well, by the time I buy extrusions and nuts and bolts and corner stuff, it's going to cost me more than that. So I just bought the original one. And the way, what happens is it sits here. Uh, some gentlemen uh, have modeled out this uh, to help keep the sides from flopping out. Apparently when it gets warm in here, being acrylic, these things can bow out and drop down and then it's squishing your stuff. So this helps to keep it in place. And then it clips into the front extrusion here and the back extrusion along here. Now, the bigger challenge was that in the back, this part overhung into the slot for the extrusion, which meant the lid wouldn't fit. So back to Prusa Slicer, and I just thickened out the bottom part by 10 millimeters. Uh, again, uh, some negative volume cylinders, and you need uh, 18 or 20 millimeter screws along with, where are they here? These little T-nuts, uh, whichever ones you want to use. I use these ones that go in and turn and twist. That's all I had. I like the other ones where you kind of clip them in, but I didn't want to have to order more and delay this project even more. So here we go. I'm starting to get everything back together. The thing I really do like about uh, the Hamera setup here is that the heater core and thermistor wires are have the little uh, quick release ends. So if I want to swap this out or repair it or whatever else, perfect. I, I don't have to go through this whole cable chain again and worry about things just here. There are a few other little things. Once I get it up and running and, and get it sort of attached, I'll go over. The biggest challenge is the cable for the CR Touch. I don't know if you can see in there. But it's because the unit is mounted way down in the case underneath here, comes up through a hole, this is all you can deal with. And it's attached in such an awkward little space there. Trying to get it all set up, really tough. And then now I gotta refeed this wire up through there, along through here, and then back over and under and it has to it has to come out can't go through here because of the way it, it works <sighs> oh okay that is uh tonight's project so i'm going to work on that get that all set up and uh, get it going this will slide underneath here a little bit of slack for the extruder motor uh now there's a bit of a resonance so uh, right now i just have a little piece of uh uh, paper towel folded up to keep this little fan from buzzing. That's all good. There are a couple things that you need to look at. Um, number one, the fan blades on these little guys, really delicate. I had to buy a new one because I dropped uh, the screwdriver uh, and kind of went to grab it and it slammed into here and it knocked one of the blades off the original fan. So, I went to Amazon and got some 1S extension leads. So they're basically just 
uh, for you know single cell lipos to plug them in and soldered that on here uh, I did get an extension for the lead for the cooling fan here uh, and routed it out through so that otherwise this blue and yellow is too tight uh, it's at its very max I don't like that kind of thing I like to have some little bit of flexibility so that's all good I'm trying to think through all the different things I've had to go through over the last little while uh, oh, also on the heater core uh, this comes with just uh, tinned ends that doesn't work uh, or with little pins on them uh, that doesn't work in this setup so what I had to do was just cut it off here we go here's the original heater wire uh, I just cut it off and soldered it to the E3D wires and a little bit of heat shrink and we're good to go uh, anything else oh yeah the th same with the thermistor wire I uh, did the same thing here uh, and yeah it's all looking good so I'm gonna get a few more things figured out I'll bring you back and let's see if this thing uh, works a little bit better catch in a little bit uh, it'll be maybe a day or so for me it could be maybe a couple seconds for you I really need to get a better handle on how this camera works for these types of things anyways um, let's get through what we've done so far I have all the wiring sort of rerouted uh, less spaghetti kind of more somewhat organized all the wires have been rerouted replugged it back in we have the thermistor right here the hot end extruder uh, fan uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but all of the fan blades are intact. So I didn't screw that up yet. The CR touches all run through. All the other wires and uh, end stop wire here, that's all, all done up. Spaghetti's just hanging loose, hanging out all the way down to there. Looks really good. Happy how this has come together. Oh, the other thing is down here, the fan duct. Let's see if I can get you a better, better zoom here. This was uh, another model I found on, on Thingiverse. And uh, it just uses the stock 4010 uh, blower fan. For me right now, it seems sufficient. I can always add in afterwards if I need to modify things. The piece of paper towel has been reshaped with a piece of foam. So, oh, I also really like the fact that on the 3D printed cable chain, these little guys, um, they make rerouting stuff so much easier because you can clip it in, clip them out, works fantastic. So again, all these models will be on Thingiverse or links to the ones that I used <laughs> and hopefully it should be good. Oh, hopefully that's nothing serious upstairs. I don't know if you heard that big thump, probably the goofy dog. Okay, let me keep working on it. I'll get everything organized up and then we'll get her done. Show you sort of maybe a test print. All right, finally. My inner OCD is all fixed up. I think uh, that spaghetti mess is all nicely tucked up in there. Looking really good. We got some filament organized in there. Wire routing, yeah, it's a bit exposed, but I'm okay with that. These guys, I gotta see how it fits, but works really good. I got a little bit of extra wire hanging out there, so that's all gonna be pulled down into here, and then this is all gonna be zip tied and cleaned up so it doesn't get caught or anything. But now that I got it on, let's uh let's see. So we're gonna go to print. Let's go to a calibration cube and let's see how we do. Heating up the hot end, heating up the build plate. Oh, oh, here we go, homing. Okay, smooth. Very smooth. Yeah, I have occasionally 
I don't know why, but the stepper motor for the bill plate tends to slide down when it's unpowered. Gets a little bit of clunking when it's at the bottom. Got to figure that out. Okay, I think 12th time is the charm. We have, uh, I had to change the build sheet, or the, the yeah, the build sheet. Uh, the other one, I guess, was contaminated. Nothing was sticking to it, so here we go. There we go. Look at that. That is the Revo Hemera XS on an Ender 6. Wow. It's, uh, it's smooth. Like, that is, let's have a little closer. Yeah, that's way better than I ever got with the other setup. Nice, good, clean stuff. This build plate, I, I got the wrong size. I, I know that the, the Ender 6 has a 250 by 250 uh, build volume. So I got a 250 by 250 plate. Uh, you can see it's a little bit off. Uh, this thing will work on my Prusa or some other printers. Um, and the way this thing works, it really doesn't care. Uh, anyways, I got a, a 300 by 300. That should be just about right. So far, I'm pretty impressed with this this, uh, this plate. Uh, this is also the um, Wham Bam flexible build system. Uh, that's the 3M magnet on the bottom. Working fantastic. All of my machines that I could, I put that on. My CR-10S Pro and, and this one works just a treat. I, I don't think there's any reason why you'd want to go with anything else, unless you're having adhesion issues or you're working with ABS or something that's sticking bad to everything else, but um, looking good so far. So I'll uh, bring you back when it's all done and uh, we'll see how it looks. Hey, look at that. It's all done. Uh, let's get in here. Oh, it just pops off nicely. Well, come on, focus. There we go. That looks pretty good. A little bit of over extrusion in a couple spots. I think I gotta tune it in a little bit more. How's that top looking? Pretty good. Little little blobby. Pretty darn good. And the Y side. Yeah, I'm not getting any ringing or anything like that, so yeah, just a couple layers are a bit goofy. I still always have trouble. I don't know if you can see the very corners are just kinda PLA. I can never get it to uh, uh, not curl a bit at the corners. Yeah, that's where some of it's coming from, is curling up at the corners. Sorry, I'm not focusing properly on this. Um, anyways, there we go. We have this updated, that thing updated. It's all working great. Uh, I'm gonna list all the different parts, how many of each. Like I said, I'll give you the models or links to them and uh, on Thingiverse and otherwise, we'll go from there. Hey, hopefully this helps a little bit. Uh, I had to figure it all out from scratch and, and go from there. The biggest um, thing you can take out of this is this is not a plug and play, drop in, quickie type of uh, upgrade. It's going to take a little bit of thinking, some wire management, some cable management. Uh, more than likely, if uh, up at the back here, you're going to have to solder. I I'm sorry, nothing I can do about it. Uh, if you don't know how to solder, unfortunately, then maybe you could find some of those crimp connectors or I don't like those um, or, you know, the, the, the little the shrink tube thingies. Uh, you put them on there and then you heat them up and they kind of self solder and then heat shrink on. You could use those. I just get the soldering iron on and out and we're good to go. So this is all real good. I might do a quick little uh, video once the lid comes in, uh, maybe a little short, to uh, tie this all up. Hey, thanks a lot for coming along. A lot of talking, not a lot of, you know, doing stuff, but hopefully uh, it helps you out a little. Throw me a like, maybe a subscribe. I got some more stuff coming here. I don't know about that form bot Vive Dino Trudon 2.0. Oh, that's a that's a nice machine. Been looking at a Voron for quite a while, but I just don't have time to build it. And those things, you know, three, four hours, 
you got yourself a, a Voron, pretty much. A couple tunes. There's a, a gentleman on YouTube who has a really great channel. I've been watching his stuff on, on his, and there's some good other components. Mm. Still waiting for my five print head Prusa XL. Nothing on that yet. If you got one, hey, awesome. Have a good one. We'll catch you later. Take care.